Hello everyone, welcome back to AC Today Reports. I'm your host, Latasha Hewitt, and I hope you've had a great week so far, have you? If not, let's make it better. We hope you're gonna enjoy this evening's show. We have a lot to share with you, more about money management. Guys, we have to make better choices. We're gonna talk about ministry moment, how we should take better care of ourselves. We're gonna ask the pastor, inquiring minds want to know, and we're gonna be reminded of some of the things that we need to do to prioritize our health. All right, we have all of that coming up. Right now is your opportunity to share this with someone else who may appreciate this program. Oh, we'll be right back with all of what I just shared with you after the break. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. All right, everyone, back. welcome back to AC Today Reports. We're happy that you stay tuned in, and we're moving to another one of our favorite segments. Um, this is actually Black History Month, and uh, we're still talking about money management with Ryan Evans from The Wealth Factor. And we're going to deal with a very interesting subject as we uh, are, as I said, starting Black History Month. And we want to invite him at this time to join us. How are you doing, Ryan Evans? Hey, Latasha. How are you doing today? Awesome. Awesome. Just to remind everyone, Ryan Evans is the CEO of The Wealth Factor. He has an MBA with over 15 years of um financial management and advice and planning and all of the things um, that you need to be wealthy in life. Okay. And so we're happy to have him with us. And we always like to shout out his church, Breath of Life as well. Um, but Ryan, we're talking, you know, it's Black History Month. And, you know, this is where we're putting a lot of emphasis on um, Blacks and, and the, sh the struggle, not necessarily just the struggle, but celebrating the contributions of um, Blacks in America. And um, yeah, at the same time, it gives us an opportunity to bring awareness to some of the issues um, that are not so much talked about as it relates to us as a people. And one of them is um, wealth, um, the disparities that exist between whites and minorities in general. Would you say that that is an issue or something that, that we're, we're still seeing or is still prevalent today? Uh, Tasha, it's um, it's honest. It's honestly uh, just baffling and frustrating to me to see it every day. Mm. Um, not just the people I work with, but just to read the articles and see that there is a clear line drawn between the wealth in a particular in a white family versus the wealth in a black family. Right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so many times, so many in so many ways um, before now. Um, things have been taken from us before we even had a chance to, I guess, um, grow them like wealth, right? Um, even if we go back into slavery, um, when we were free, we weren't really free because we still didn't have the rights that were, you know, held by our counterparts. We couldn't go out and get the loan, business loans that we needed. We couldn't go out and, you know, take our inheritance that we got from the free labor that we provided to build something, right? So therefore, we were started from scratch. Right. Um, you know, even um, was it the free Freedman uh, Freedman Savings Bank? That was one of the um, right out of, out of slavery, right? That was one of the uh, institutions that was established to help slaves transfer from being a slave to going out into society and growing, you know, something of substance. Um, they had about sixty one thousand uh, deposits with that bank. However, due to mismanagement by those handling that um, particular institution, it crumbled and $2 million was lost. And then if you if you move forward to Tulsa, the Black Wall Street incident, yeah. just, every time we tried to move forward, we were knocked back. And that's still prevalent today in the way uh, society is structured, the way the things in the government are sometimes structured. Not speaking against the government, I'm just saying that, you know, there are things that, you know, affect us indirectly in a negative way because we don't haven't had the same opportunities as, as our counterparts. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, with Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday last month, I, you know, I always like to revisit some of his speeches. And, and one of them, he was talking about, um, he was being interviewed 
by a news broadcaster. And he said something uh, about us pulling ourselves up by our own bootstraps. Yeah. And in so many ways, he alluded to the fact that we don't even have boots. I mean, you know, like we, <laughs> it's yeah. not like we're lazy people who don't want to work, but when yeah. we're not given the tools, you know, how can someone pull themselves up by their own bootstraps when there are no boots to pull up? Like, and, and making people aware, um, so, some of our um, white co counterparts that uh, a lot of it has not to do with our desire to excel, but uh, what we've been given um, in, in comparison to what they've been given. I think um, that's the part of education that really needs to take place for them to understand. It's not that we can't do what you can do. We just don't have what you have um, to be able to do it. I think we're trying to turn that corner, but it's a lot to make up from when you have systematic racism that is <laughs> bent on keeping us down that generations you know it takes generations to, to overcome that um and so from your perspective you know we don't want to just sit back and say oh yeah you know they made it hard for us how can we counteract or overcome some of these disparities or work towards that at least so you know there are ways that we can i guess increase our financial stance in the world, right? But, you know, it's a combination, it's, it's got to be a combination for it to be um, effective and the effects to be long lasting mm -hmm. um, for us as a people um, on one side to do what we can to become financial literate. However, there has to be uh, some way that the government puts into place a, a, a level playing field, right? Whether it's a uh, uh, address addressing the tax code, right? Or mm. you know, inheritance tax, which a lot of us don't get as a black as black people. We don't get millions of dollars in inheritance, which mm. is one of the ways that you know this gap continues to grow. Where do you think that wealth came from? We don't have we don't have those kind of things, right? Right. So there's not really a fix right now that we can put into place. However, Becoming financial literate, knowing what's out there in terms of uh, investments, in terms of uh, debt consolidation, paying off debt strategies, uh, you know, those are going to be the kind of ways that we can combat um, that gap. But, you know, things that we do, like, and for instance, I did it. I, want, I said, okay, for me to increase my income, I need more education. Mm -hmm. I got that more, that, that additional education. But now I have student loans, right? Then you then you can sometimes have conversations with our counterparts and oh, you had student loans? Oh, my parents paid for it. <laughs> oh, well, guess what? My parents couldn't, right? Because they didn't have they didn't have money that was passed to them. They couldn't start a business uh 60, 70, 80 years ago that's still in in you know existence today. Right. So you have, you know, that multiple streams of income and a nice, a nice amount of income at that. So it's even today, we see, you know, you know, effects of the way society has operated yeah. prior, long time from now. And we still are suffering from that. Um, you know, there you can set up maybe a 529 plan, right? Which is a tax advantage savings vehicle for school. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, I guess, but not, and I'm harping on school. I'm sorry. I'm harping on school because that's one of the biggest um, uh, debts that we have as a people. We yeah. got education and that's still there. Um, but you can open up a 529 plan that I mentioned, and that can, you know, defer your tax on, on different things um, and then enable you to save at a, with an interest rate. But that's just, you know, a drop in the bucket. Right. right. And, and you have to have that income to be able to do that, you know, mm -hmm. um, setting up a savings plan. Right. Um, buying a home. But then, you know, that can become a, um, a vehicle for, you know, growing your wealth, right? right. But it, just, it, it all depends, it all hinges on that one thing, having that additional income or that increased income to where you can actually do some of those things. But what I've done, and that's part of the reason why I actually started The Wealth Factor, is because I want to find a way to level the playing field. Mm. And Education is one of the biggest ways to do that. And I, and I, you know, I started with my own kids. I don't want to continue the continue a generation that is not financially savvy, right? Um, being financially savvy is a way that you can actually grow your wealth because you've, you've, you've gotten rid of some of the bad habits, right? 
so that you have more money that is 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 free to you to use, right? Or spend. Yeah, absolutely. That that's awesome. Yeah, and I'm glad you're mentioning all of these things because, you know, we. I don't want us as a people to spend too much time. Um, I, I think we should advocate for certain things that that need to be fixed that have been systemically, you know, ingrained in our government. However, I also want us to be proactive and, like you were saying, educating our children, starting more businesses. You know, even though we weren't able to do it back then, we can do it now. We can encourage yeah. our children to do it. Um, you know, listen. That this is why, and I don't think people get why people are always promoting support black businesses because there was a time when they weren't even allowed to have real businesses. I mean, there were a lot of like bootleg businesses, come get your hair done at, at Mama yeah. Jim's house kind of thing, yeah. Yeah. but not legitimate businesses. And now is the time. And so uh, people need to maximize on that. And that's why there's such this push for support black businesses, support black yeah. businesses, because we've never had that amount of support. Um, to be able to build generational wealth. And, and the thing is, no matter what nationality you are, everyone wants to live a good life and want to be able to provide for their children. And I think for black people, especially because we weren't able to do that for so many years, because we watch our grandparents struggle, or maybe our parents struggle, we're determined that our next generation won't, we won't, won't continue this cycle. Absolutely. And you were very right when you said education is key. A lot of the reasons why we don't make these good decisions is because we don't know. Um, and that's another reason. You, that's why you started the wealth factor. That's why we have this segment money management. We don't want it, We want to eliminate all excuses. <laughs> you know, uh, you're going to know, and then it's going to be up to you to decide to make those, those choices. But, um, you know, it's, it's horrible to, to, to see that that's our history. Um, yet there's this motivation, particularly when you have children coming behind you that it may have been that way, but going forward, we, we want to really turn that curve. I agree, Tasha. Um, and it's it's amazing to watch our people. We are one of the most resilient oh, yeah. groups of people that ex have ev that exist, right? What we've been through and where we've come is a great. It, it's 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 awesome to see. Yeah. I look on my social media and see all of the doctors, the lawyers, the business owners, the the professional, uh, whoever it is, Tasha. Mm -hmm. It's awesome to see that. But, you know, the unfortunate thing is our starting block was back here. Their starting block was right. Back here. So yeah. even with that, we still fought to push for it. And we're continuing that fight. But, you know, there's, 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 there's a lot we can do. But at the same time, there's only so much we can do. But as long as we stay focused, as long as we um, become financially literate and financially savvy, that is going to be our key tool in the fight against that gap growing. I I agree, and I hope I hope our listeners are listening <laughs> because um, you know knowledge is key, and after that knowledge, action is key. You know, it's not mm -hmm. enough to know it; uh, we got to follow through with action and um, dedicate more time to educating our young people about the, these kinds of things. Um, because it's so easy for them to become um, caught up in materialism, like getting the getting of stuff, but not really understanding what it means to to really be wealthy. Um, and, uh, and, you know, people always say some of the wealthiest people in the world, you would never know that they are because they don't show it. They, they're not flashy with what they have. And, you know, I always try to teach my children that, you know, it's not about what people think you have. It's about what you actually have. And you have to make smart money decisions even now at, at their young ages. Um, so we got to do our part in educating. Yeah, um, I guess, you know, going along with something you just mentioned, uh, some of the wealthiest people, you know, having a different mindset, you know, and when I was working at a, uh, one of the accounting firms that I worked at prior to now, I was in a parking garage and I was going to my car and uh, a partner at the firm was going to his car, right? This is somebody that's making four or five hundred K base, right? He walks over to what was maybe a 2000 or something uh, Honda Civic hybrid. <laughs> and there's, nothing, no, there's nothing wrong with that. Right, car. Yeah. But when you look at what, what he makes versus- what he could afford. Right. And I was like, I was like, Dave, I was like, man, I just looked like, and he knew, he just started laughing. He's like, right. I've been there. I've done that. Yeah. I'm, I'm about something different now, you know? I don't, I don't need those things. And mm -hmm. like, once we develop a mindset like that, before we make that money, then God can entrust us with that kind of money. 
Amen. I think that's a great way to even end this segment. You know, uh, we have to manage what God has given us. We, in the end, it all belongs to Him. Yeah. Um, and uh, He's given us the ability. We have to. We have to do what we can to multiply those talents. We can't bury them in the ground and um, not do our part in making sure that they flourish. Uh, well, thank you, Ryan. This has been a, a great discussion. Um, as frustrating as these disparities are, um, we have to talk our way out of them. We got to educate yeah. our way out of them. We have to act yeah. our way out of them. And um, also seek policy change. I mean, we can't forget that as well, that we still have a responsibility to advocate for that. Absolutely. When we see it. Well, um, you know, we appreciate you. This is um, your last segment with us for a little while, but um, the wealth factor has provided us with a wealth of knowledge over the last four weeks. And uh, we are so uh, grateful to you. Once again, if people want to reach out to you, um, go ahead and shout out your information so uh, they're to reach you. Absolutely. Uh, my email address, is which, gonna, which is going to be the most direct way of reaching me, is going to be ryan at madisonevansgroup.com. My IG is going to be uh, Ryan Evans underscore Wealth Factor. And then you can also search me um, by uh, the Wealth Factor on Facebook. So, but yeah, my email address is going to be the easiest and most direct way of uh, reaching out to me. Um, I'd be glad to uh, speak with you about any of the questions you may have about what I do or, you know, um, any other advice. So, Awesome. Thanks again. We appreciate you and the Wealth Factor for sharing your knowledge with us over the last few weeks. Take right. care. And we'll be back. We'll probably bring you back on later on in the year, um, but we're happy that you got us off to a good start in this new year financially. Thanks again. Thank you, Tasha. All right, everyone. We'll be right back after another break. When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for staying tuned into AC Today Reports. And as always, we are excited because we get to talk to another one of our AEC members and about, you know, some of the wonderful things they're doing in ministry right now. Um, as we, we all know, this pandemic has really taken a toll on a lot of us and uh, the things that we're experiencing and how we're even taking care of ourselves. And so for our ministry moment, we're actually gonna to talk to one of our members, Dr. Trafina Chodi. I hope I said her name right, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> who's gonna share with us her personal experience and um, what we can learn from that. So welcome, Dr. Trafina. Thank you, Tasha. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> yes, we're so happy to have you. Um, now, I always like for our AC members to shout out their church. Which church are you from? I'm from Living Springs. It's a good church in Baltimore. That's right. Living Springs. Yes. I think that's where I first, I didn't first meet you there, but I remember when I came to visit, mm -hmm. um, you were definitely one of the friendly faces who, who made me feel welcome. So thank yes. you for that. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. Come back again. I will. I will. Very, mm -hmm. very loving church. Yes. So uh, I kind of mentioned, uh, well, first of all, we do we do like to do our COVID check-in now, especially since we're approaching a year mm -hmm. <laughs> of us being kind of in this pandemic, how have you been personally coping with with all that's happening in the world? You know, it's 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 been uh, a changing experience, and I can say that I, you know, nobody knew, actually, including me, that we will be shut in for a year plus. Mm -hmm. Because I remember it was around this time. I have a career in international development. Okay. So I travel a lot for my work. And so I remember I was in Liberia when this was announced. Really? Uh, that there was a virus from China known as COVID-19. Hmm. So I was there for about two weeks. And then I moved on to my other si assignment, which was in Ghana. So around mid-February to the end of 
February, I was in Ghana. Just before it was announced that it's getting bad, mm-hmm. I could see when I arrived at the airport, they're checking the temperature. Nobody knew what it was, actually. And my decision was, like, I need to get back home right. before they, <laughs> this thing gets me. Yeah, here. this must be so, serious. Since then, I mean, it's been an experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I, mm-hmm. you know, recently... You know, you're, you know, kind of had a transparent moment, um, mm-hmm. and you shared on social media about an experience you had recently that kind of changed the way you kind of want to live right now, if you would say. Can you can you share with us kind of what that transformational experience was like for you? What what happened, and uh, kind of what came out of it? Well, thank you, Natasha, for that helping me to reflect what I wrote uh, last week. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, I think it was last month. In, no, we're in February, actually. Yeah, it's it's time is flying. <laughs> yeah, time is going. So, when the pandemic hit, as I have said, I work in international development, and uh, I travel, get back, I'm able to rest, and and then hit the road again or the air, whatever it is. So, since the pandemic hit. Um, I was able to work remotely and support my teams remotely. <laughs> what I did, what I used to do when I travel, I'm doing it virtually, and that took toll on me mm-hmm. as trying to, you know, handhold my teams in the countries that I support to be able to perform, and at the same time picking up extra responsibilities as everybody was working very hard during this pandemic. What I didn't realize was that it was taking toll on me. Mm. And I blame myself because really I'm a workaholic. Uh oh, that was I, I, I cannot do that. I have to get it get it working until it's done. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I love my but find a ministry because it's it's, it's a getaway for me to recharge because I get involved with the young people. And so I get to release the tensions and, and the, the stress of the job by being involved with, okay, with the pathfinders. Mm-hmm. So during the, this time, I mean, there were moments where I felt like, you know, something is not right. And mm. then I set you an appointment and then I reschedule it. Because this this pandemic, I don't want to go outside. I was yeah. here. Nobody even because wants to go get help because you don't want to be exposed. More especially because I live with my mom. She's 78 years old. Mm-hmm. And she's sickly. So I didn't want to be the one getting out there in, you know, being responsible for the fight. Oh, yeah. So I kept on snoozing that. Finally, I had to... See the doctor virtually schedule me to see a specialist. I snooze that. So it came to me until the doctors made the call and asked what came of that referral that I gave him. Mm. And that put something on me, like I failed my doctor. Not uh, even I failed me because yeah, your doctor it was, was about me, mm-hmm. but my doctor is more concerned. So that got me to thinking. And once I called the specialist, I was like, I've been having this FRC, I've been waiting to hear you. And so with that, I have to be scheduled for a procedure within two days. Two days after going, wow. Yes, yes. It was that urgent, and uh, my doctor said, can you read those notes again? Tell me, I hadn't even read the notes. So during this month, of healing, I came to the realization of so many things. For one, I was able to like feel normal. Mm. I didn't know how far I had taken an exit from myself mm. health-wise because I was working and working and I didn't realize I had a burnout. Wow. But I was pushing on with the work because yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm producing, let's go, let's go. And so I didn't know how far down this had happened. Yeah, yeah. And and that's something I think 
a lot of people can relate to. Sometimes people think, oh, you're working from home. Oh, you get to relax every hour and sit on the couch. And no, for people who have a strong work ethic like yourself, you're actually probably yes. working longer hours. Yes. And you don't really know when to stop. And you can't even gauge, like you said, when burnout has taken place because you're just go, go, go. You're in go, go, go mode. Yes. And, and so, you know, you got to the point where you realized that you were affecting, it was affecting you physically. Fortunately, you had a doctor who followed up <laughs> to make sure, you, you know, because it could have been worse, you know, it could have been worse. It, if it had yes, happened. that's right. It, it could have been because the, the, the specialist I saw said, thank God for your doctor. Mm. Because I was just reading, it was, it was something that it was affecting my health. But I'd not known the extent it was affecting my health. You know, I'm, I'm just taking painkillers and, and going on and coming yeah. back, taking painkillers. It's something that needed attention, but I did not really take that because I'm like, let me get this project done. Let me get this proposal in. Oh, next week, it, you know, and yeah. tell me the recovery period is this much. No, I can wait, you know? Yeah. And that took toll on me. It took toll on me, and I and I, and I, I, I feel like I'm guilty because I now realized I wasn't available as much even for my family because you know because I'm working, I'm working, half working. The time. I I wake up, I'm here in the same spot working the entire time. But you know, during the normal work week when you used to have although most of the time i usually work from home but you could get time to go out yeah you know go to the office one day a week or twice a week and you are you are seeing something different right but here is a case you are in your study room the entire day mm -hmm. and all your interaction is the computer yeah yeah it's, it's not really, healthy it's not healthy and so after after having that experience and, you know, kind of through your healing process, you know, yeah. a few things uh, kind of resonated with you in terms of the importance of self-care. And so you made a commitment on social media that you were going to do what? Actually, thank you for that, Sasha. I realized I was being unfair to myself, mm -hmm. to my family, and even to my employer because... I was getting a burnout that mm -hmm. I didn't know I was getting a burnout. So I think it was a wake up call for me. So what I came up with was a personalized self care plan. I had to customize it to me, listening to my body. I'm not growing young. I'm 51 now. So. <laughs> still young, still young. Yes. So I, I need, I need, I need to be intentional on how I take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so what I came up with was a personalized self-care plan that I thought I want to share with people. I want to hold myself accountable publicly with my friends. But at the same time, there's somebody like me yeah. who is working like me, you know, who, who doesn't know it is really hurting them. Mm -hmm. until it's too late. So I said, I'll be sharing if it becomes a, a mission for me to start sharing so that somebody can get it and, and walk with me. Because you look at it even from the spiritual point of it, you need to remain in tune with God. If you don't have a, a, a plan that is intentional, when do you do your Bible study? Mm -hmm. When do you connect right. with God and pray? Right. When, when do you meditate? You lose it because mm -hmm. you become a robot responding yep. to responding to responding. So I had to come up with a strategy within my work to be sure that self-care is going to be number one. So one of the things that I've done is to block time to be able to put a stop and a stretch. Mm. Yes, I, I need to stretch. Stop I have to remind stretch. myself. Yes, stop working and stretch because mm -hmm. it, it helps to stretch. Yeah, and 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 that's that's happening and it's helpful. And uh, one of the things that I I have a weakness for is I don't know how to say no. Mm. 
that's one thing that I've learned and I wanted to share actually this week that really let's learn to say no what you can take and don't feel guilty for saying no. No. Mm -hmm. It means you can get to it. Yeah. Say no to yourself and say no to others and to tasks that you can do. Mm -hmm. Because we are saying yes to ourselves, we are saying yes, but it's hurting your health. So we need to reach a point where this is what I can do. Believe me, we have these 1,440 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. But you got to say, this is what I can do within those minutes, right. and this is what I cannot do. So sometimes we set for ourselves um, really goals that are beyond. And, and so it, it, it gets on your way of self-care. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. we need to be very realistic with ourselves what we can do with the minutes that we have for the day and say that this is what I can do. And uh, I'm one of those people who sometimes when I'm, you know, I, I wake up in the morning and, and, and uh, after my prayer, you know, there's email people, the country is calling for something. I'm supposed to get up and go for my exercise. Mm. But if it is a decision that needed me, I'll jump on the computer and start to respond to the email. Mm -hmm. And before I realized, work hours here started and it's gone. So I'll say, after my meditation is exercise. I'm going to be 30 to 40 minutes of exercise, then awesome. take my breakfast, and then sit in my office by 8.30. Okay. So that's one of the things I'm praying for that I can live with it. Okay. I, I love to read. I, I, I do a lot. I do a lot. So I'm going intentional to what time I allocate for my reading. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm doing that and I'm, and I'm enjoying it. I, I don't watch TV unless I'm passing by because there's so much negative energy coming out of me. Oh, yeah. That's I don't easy. watch. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let me read something that I, I, I choose Enjoy. to read. So some of those so those are some of the strategies that I'm coming up with. I also love to garden. I can't wait for spring. No. So gardening is one of my favorites and I, I'm starting to put my seedlings in preparation for spring. Oh nice. So when it comes, I block time that I will spend for 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 gardening. And something else something else I, I've also really put intention of all, God help me, I'll not work late. Mm, setting that time limit, yeah. Yes, set time limit when you can be on your computer for work. Yeah. And believe me, if you can work that those hours when you are recharged, you can produce. Because sometimes we keep on going, 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 mm -hmm. thinking we are being productive, but right. we are not. Yep, say it. Yeah, we are not. <laughs> It's not about so, the hours, it's not about the qu quantity of the hours, but the quality of the hours the that you quality. do a lot. Yeah. That way you're not feeling guilty by, you know, not being there for your family, mm -hmm. feeling guilty not being there for your friends. We need them. We need the friends. I mean, yeah. We need family. So it brings sanity to our lives. It spices our health relationship. So we need them. So we yeah. have to be very intentional on how we plan to, to do this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love yes. this. I I love that you you personalize your plan. So it's yes. like, you know, you looked at the things that you recognize were an issue, working too long or yeah prioritizing work first thing in the morning over the things mm -hmm. that you knew were important to you, such as, you know, having your full work, your devotional and exercise first. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when that email bings, you know, cause a lot of us have that notification when the email pops up, instead yeah. of looking right to it, you said, Oh, I'm doing my exercise first. I'll get to that email as soon as I, I'm done. Yeah. That takes a lot of discipline though. That's a hard habit to break when you're yes. used to doing that day oh, yes. in and day out. Yes. But also, like you said, carving out time for things that you like to do and not mm -hmm. feeling guilty about it, like reading. I mean, yes. you know, we let that go because mm -hmm. we're reading so much for work or reading this email yeah, and yes. we don't even take the time to read for pleasure anymore. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. 
Yes. And also part of your plan is, you know, you talked about that accountability and part of that accountability is you being able to share some of these tips mm-hmm. on, on your social media to help others not fall into the same trap, right? Yes, yes. I'll be sharing that and that and I, I want to be intentional down the road. I want to start uh, a blog. Oh. If I can spend like 20 minutes a day to to, to learn how to blog so that I can I can do that more. I want to do that. Awesome. And eventually really I want to write a book of my experience okay. and help others think through their work, think through their experience and see Really, we all know God, I mean, we, we respond to God's call in our life, but we need to know how to take care of this temple that he has given us yeah. so that we can fulfill that purpose. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that's self-care. Yes. You know, we were mm-hmm. talking about that even last week, how se- we should make self-care part of our health care. Like, you know, we can't let self be separate from everything else that we think we're doing to to be healthy. Um Taking care of yeah. yourself gives you the ability, like you said, to give back to others. If you're not taking care of yourself, then you won't be around you, to help you the people. You want to be care. around to take care. And you will not even work, you know, be productive. I, I, I'm guilty because I didn't take my vacation in 2020 because it was COVID. Where mm-hmm. am I going? Yeah, a lot of us. So I'll just stay. But that vacation time is important. Yep. Take it. Use it. Even if you have just to sleep in, take it. Yep. Take it. Yeah. Take the time mm-hmm. and just yes. take your mind away from work for a little mm-hmm. while. This You'll is be kinda, more productive. Yeah. This is mm-hmm. kind of like a cautionary tale because I know so many of us, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm talking to myself, you yes. know, we we don't, we hear it, we know it, but we don't act on it. So this yeah. is this is our plea to all of you who are watching right now who recognize yourself and some of what we've been talking about. Uh, we're giving you permission, as we like to say, to take time for yourself, to set realistic boundaries between work and your life so that you can remain healthy, right? Yes. And so every Monday, you're posting a tip on your on your Facebook yes. um, page, and I always check with my guests to make sure they're okay with people checking out their pages. So um, her Facebook page is her name, Trafina Chody. <laughs> And even last week you talked about, you know, that was one of the the first tips you shared was to schedule for self-care, you know, make that part Mm -hmm. of your schedule, Mm -hmm. not something that you just say you're going to do, actually put it in your schedule um, that you're doing something to take care of yourself. So that's awesome. That's Mm -hmm. awesome. So I want to thank you for Mm -hmm. your transparency, sharing with all of us how, you know, you recognized almost too close. Um... (laughs) You know, mm-hmm. how you should have been taking better care of yourself, but coming out of it now, you not mm-hmm. only want to do better for yourself, but help us do better by sharing. And so we, we would really want to hear about that blog. So once you get it going, yes, yes I share will. With us. I will. I will. And, and I will take care of myself because my husband is like, you need to take care of yourself, honey. You know? Mm-hmm. He's right. <laughs> I'll do, I'll do Listen to hubby. Yes. <laughs> he wants you around for a long time, so that's, that's a good right. thing. Mm-hmm. Well, thank yeah. you so much for taking the time to, to share with us. And also, thank you for your commitment. I forgot to mention in the beginning, Dr. Trafina, with all the busy things that she has to do, she still takes time to be our Baltimore area um, Pathfinder coordinator. Um, and so we appreciate your dedication to our Pathfinder ministry and our children. Um, it really means a lot. So we're, we're happy that that can be a nice distraction for you, as you said, <laughs> from, from the other work. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. And we wish, wish you much success on your self-care journey. And we'll be checking in with you to make sure you're staying committed. <laughs> That's right. We want you around for a long time. Thank you, Latasha. No problem. All right, everyone. Nice. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! You saved me. Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org caregiving. 
Hello, everyone. Thank you for staying tuned in to AC Today Reports. We're happy to go into one of our favorite segments now, and that is our Ask the Pastor segment. Um, for those who may not know what we're talking about, this is where we take your questions, things that may be brewing in your mind about various topics, and we ask one of our resident uh, pastors within AEC, and we're happy once again to welcome our resident pastor at the conference, uh, Dr. Gene Donaldson, who serves as our ministerial director. Welcome back, Dr. Donaldson. Well, thank you so much for having me again. How are you doing today? Doing pretty good, Excellent. pretty good. God is still blessing. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> All right, so we, we're gonna dive right in because um, you know, we're, we're enjoying these questions that are coming in and we want to remind everyone that if you have a question, this is this is the place to send it uh, we, so other people can hear the response as well. Email it to me at lhewitt at aecsda.com. Make sure you put ask the pastor in the subject line so I know what you're referring to and we will have a question asked on this program. All right. So we're ready for tonight's question. Okay. Okay. This is a good one. What is the process for assigning mm. pastors to specific churches? And you would be uh, the perfect person to answer this as our ministerial director. Good. Well, thank you for that question because this is an area where um, <clears throat> uh, I am uh, really involved in. Whenever we have a, um, a transitional situation at one of our churches where uh, we need to um, provide pastoral leadership, uh, then I am one of the persons that uh, is intimately involved in that process. And so I'll give some uh, general um, guidelines uh, that we uh, try to adhere to uh, in order to uh, bring about a, uh, a, a, a good uh, covenant between the congregation and the new pastoral leader. Of course, uh, <clears throat> fundamentally, whenever you have a transition and you're trying to bring the right pastor to a church, um, prayer is essential. And so uh, we try to uh, uh, bathe literally, um, if I, Mercy. Well, not literally, <laughs> Figuratively, it's probably better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we bathe it figuratively uh, in, um, in prayer. Uh, I have conversations with our uh, president, uh, who is ultimately responsible for all of our pastors and our churches. And uh, we begin the process with prayer. And then uh, one of the other essential steps is uh, I make contact with the uh, church leadership, usually elders and church board members of the prospective church. And uh, we begin an initial dialogue. Uh, <clears throat> that dialogue uh, takes place in a number of ways both uh, with some informal conversations that I have with the uh, usually the first elder. And then uh, we set up a formal meeting uh, with the uh, church board and the elders board together. And uh, we go through what's called our church profiling process. That church profiling process is a two-step um, uh, process where there is a survey document that uh, we ask our church board and elders of that particular church to complete. We do this because uh, even though uh, <clears throat> churches have had pastoral changes in the past, uh, churches are dynamic. They're like people. They change over time. They they find themselves in different spaces in their journey. And so uh, this particular document uh, allows us to be able to get uh, critical information uh, from the church as 
to how they perceive where they are uh, at this juncture in uh, their uh, spiritual journey as a congregation. The second part of that process, though, is just as important. And that is after we have the survey, which uh, ask uh, questions on their worship style, on some attributes that they might be interested in in pastoral leadership, what kinds of issues they are facing. Um, we then spend significant time in direct dialogue with the church. And this gives the leadership an opportunity to share with me anything that they uh, felt that they were not able to put on the, the survey sheet that the survey sheet didn't cover. And we are able to ascertain um, additional uh, information and nuances that uh, the leadership feels would be helpful uh, for that particular congregation. And then after that, uh, uh, the next important phase is that I always ask the uh, congregation to uh, to enter into a prayer covenant. Uh, let them know that uh, the president yeah. and I will be uh, praying after we assess their information that they have provided. And uh, we will enter into a prayer covenant. And we ask the congregation to be praying that the Lord will help us and send us. Now, a question that always comes up is, um, do we discuss personalities and mm, yeah no, that's a good one you know we don't discuss personalities that is to say I, I when we are going through this process i don't discuss specific pastors but we do allow our churches to share with us what attributes okay. characteristics that they might be interested in in a pastoral leader and uh, we're always interested in those kinds of uh, um, um, pieces of input. And then um, I uh, get that particular information. That information is sorted and correlated and a summary sheet is returned to the church so that all of the members of the board and the elders can know exactly uh, what the percentages were of individuals who answered each one of the questions and what were okay. more important, et cetera. And then, uh, <clears throat> as I said, uh, we go about the task of prayerfully trying to find a person that um, best uh, meets the kinds of uh, characteristics and attributes that the local church is uh, saying that they need in their pastoral leader. Our uh, commitment is we usually look within our conference first. Right. But if we're not able to uh, uh, find someone uh, that can meet what that church is uh, suggesting or uh, the timing is not... Uh, uh, possible for a pastor who might meet the characteristics, but uh, uh, is not in a position to move. Uh, we look within first, and if we're not able to find an individual, then we are committed to going outside of the conference, if necessary, uh, to find a suitable replacement. And okay. then after uh, that is done, after we have identified some uh, potential candidates, of course, uh, the president, uh, Elder Fordham, and myself have uh, substantive discussions on the merits of each one of those individuals. And uh, after we uh, come up with a selection, then we uh, share that with the, um, uh, the leadership, usually the first elder of the uh, church, to discuss why we think that individual uh, meets okay. what the church is um, uh, asking for <laughs> and why we came to that particular conclusion. And then uh, <clears throat> subject to the um, 
approval and consent of the um, executive committee of the Allegheny East Conference, uh, uh, then that person would then be assigned to the church. Okay, so you know, as I'm listening to you go through this process, it's almost, it sounds like the matchmaking process, you know, like, like with dating, you know, you yeah. assess both people <laughs> and then you <laughs> decide. You know, which, <laughs> you know, when you say <laughs> that, that is a great, uh, that is a great uh, uh, illustration. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's really, because you're taking a lot into consideration after talking to both and, mm -hmm. you know, but with any matchmaking experience, we know sometimes the matches work perfectly <laughs> and we're happy and every, both parties are thanking us for putting the two together. And then we have the other side where it's like, what are you thinking? This person is nothing like me. Or yeah, um, so true. I know that can kind of happen with pastors and churches sometimes and not necessarily a, sure. a good fix. So and, and, you and I, might add, I might add that, that uh, that's an excellent point that you're raising. And it just uh, shows that uh, one of the most critical parts of our process is actually uh, having that direct dialogue with the church leadership where they have an opportunity to be very, very, hopefully be honest in mm -hmm. their um, particular assessment of their uh, church. And uh, of course, the other place, as you as you were alluding to, <laughs> finding somebody that kind of matches uh, what they're saying. Yeah, um, it's, it's tough. Yes. <laughs> I mean, well, because, you know, put on paper. paper. Huh? You know, they say sometimes what people put on paper is not what what people experience. But you know, so I think it helps us be a little bit more um, understanding of the process. You know, yes. you, you're looking at the information that you have, and sometimes it may not always be right, and you have to reassess, and some changes have to be made here and there. Sure. But um, sure. there is a process. Um, the system process that you all are trying to follow. Well, I tell you, it's not. Uh, of course, it's not. You know, I don't know if you could really have a completely perfect process. No. Unless the Lord just <laughs> <clears throat> would speak to us directly and say, this person should go there, et cetera. But right. I always tell um, the congregations in our, in mm -hmm. our um, time together in our conversations, uh, two things. One. I operate from the principle that the Lord already has the person because no situation really leaves God unaware. Mm -hmm. And But our job is to sync ourselves with the spirit okay. in order to be able to find the person that God has. And one of the ways that they can best help um, myself and, and the president to be able to really sync with the spirit is not only through prayer, but through their honest uh, assessment and discussion. And that's why, um, believe it or not, uh, a lot more of the information that has been helpful usually comes out in a discussion as opposed to the survey, you know? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I can imagine so. Yeah. Okay. Well, wonderful. I um, I think this really gives us a perspective. You know, it's not like just putting names in a hat and pulling one out and said, saying they're go going there or they're going there. Um, so it's good to kind of hear that process explained. And we appreciate you doing that. I mean, the more we know... Um, the more we can kind of guides our thought process as we, we look at different decisions that may, may be made by the conference. So this is very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being willing to, to share this process. And we don't envy you. We don't envy you <laughs> what you have to do because we know yeah. it's such a great task. But but Need thank you. Lots of prayer. <laughs> Need lots of prayer. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Once again, that has been our question of the week. Ask the pastor. If you have a question that you'd like to be answered on this program, you know what to do. You're going to go ahead and email me at lhewitt at aecsda.com and we'll get your question asked as well. All right, Dr. Donaldson, thanks again. We appreciate Thank the you. response. 
And we look thank forward you to for all, Thank you for all that you do. And thank you for having me again. All right. No problem. Thank you. All right, everyone. We're going to be right back after we take another quick break. Revelation 12, excuse me, 22, verse 16. Trusting that all have found. Here we go, fam. Verse 16 says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I, come on now, Jesus, am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. How are you going to be the root and the offspring, Jesus? Let's find out some more. So Jesus is the root and the offspring of David. How is this even possible? Here we go. From the line of David, Luke 3 verses 23 to 31 lets us know that. Well, David descended from Adam, who was the son of God. Luke 3 verse 38. Again, not the son of God as in Jesus, but he was created by God. God was his father. So David descended from Adam and then Adam was created by Christ. So again, you see this full circle, the root and the offspring. This is what makes God so amazing. His, his word breaks down exactly the things that seem confusing, right? So Jesus is the root and also the branch. Hello everyone. Welcome back to AC Today Reports. And we always love to close our show with a very special segment. And that, as you all know, is Fitness with Faye. We have Faye Gregory, our in-house fitness expert, who's going to be sharing with us as she has been all month long. Uh, we're going to go ahead and invite Faye on now. How are you, Faye? I'm wonderful. Hi, Latasha. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Trying to Hello live you. my best life, as they say. <laughs> awesome. I love it. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, okay, so, so we have we've been talking about a lot of great stuff to help people start this year off strong and prioritizing their health and all of those good things. And we want to make sure everyone is continuing to follow and keep up with these goals that we're putting out each week. So we thought it might be nice to end January by reviewing some of the goals that you have shared with us over the over the last few weeks. So um Let's go ahead and share them. Faye, you just recap for us one more time the highlights of each one of those, okay? Okay, absolutely. Um, Our okay. first goal for 2021 is make yourself a priority. In this hectic world, everybody is trying to take care of our family members, work responsibilities, and uh, other expect expectations from significant others, and we're not taking sufficient time for ourselves. Viewers, let me remind you that taking care of yourself is not selfish. You need That's to take right. care of yourself first so that you're able to take care of everyone else and everything else that you have to take care of in your hectic lives. I always wow. say this. Think of yourself and time for yourself as an important meeting. You would not want to miss that important board meeting, would you? Or that mm. important meeting at work with your Good supervisors. Point. You're not going to miss that. So think about your health, your well-being, your self-care is that important meeting. Make yourself a priority. Take time for yourself. It's not selfish. It's a necessity for your well-being. And when you're taking better care of yourself, you're going to look better. You're going to feel better. Preventive care. Making yourself yeah. a priority. Yes. Thank you for telling us it's okay to be a priority. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the second one, set measurable, sustainable goals. Exactly. We want to make sure our goals are measurable and sustainable. And what I mean by that, Latasha and viewers, is if you're just starting out, take baby steps. Don't make it so the goals so overwhelming that you're not able to achieve them, that they're not attainable. If you're just starting out, I want you to Wake up in the morning and say to yourself, today, I'm going to exercise for 15 minutes. Today, I'm going to put on some music and I'm going to move. Today, mm -hmm. I'm going to take a walk outside in the sunshine. One day. And once you accomplish that, you're going to feel so good about it. And mm -hmm. then the second day or that third day, 
tell yourself, say the same thing, the self self talk, which is good. Talk yourself to that exercising for 15 minutes. And then by the end of the week, you may have gotten in one or two days of exercise and that's an accomplishment. And then the second week, add an additional day of exercising, walking, mm -hmm. getting some fresh air, moving your body, putting some music on, finding an exercise virtually or on TV that you enjoy doing. You're gonna feel so accomplished. And by, you, by the time you finish that second week, the third week, the fourth week, look at you. You've accomplished a whole month of activity, of exercise. That's what I'm talking about. And after that, it's going to become two months, three months, four months, and then mm. a whole year. Look at you. Then wow. you're going to be talking about how, you know, people will see you and look at you and wow, you're looking so great. And you're going to feel better. You're going to feel wonderful inside out. That's what I mean by making your goals measurable and sustainable. We don't want to have our goals all the way up here where we're not right. able to achieve them. By yep, saying, setting yourself up oh, for this week, I'm going to work out three days a week and you haven't worked out in two years. <laughs> That's not attainable. You know, you're, right. you're taking yourself out. So let's take those baby steps and start with that one day. Right. One day. Okay. Awesome. That's yeah. right. You can do it. Viewers. I believe in you. Yes. Take your time and make sure you achieve it. Like you said, because once you are able to check off that one day, then you'll be motivated to continue with the rest of the days. And by, by the time you know it, you've actually progressed to the point where you are doing it three days a week or four days exactly. a week. So right. That's awesome. Yes. All right. Our last Ooh. one here that we've, we went over. I, can't, <laughs> I know I said the end of January, but you know, now that we're in February, we're actually looking back at some of these goals from January. And the third one was make self-care part of your health care. I love this one. Exactly. Latasha, as African-Americans, minorities, it's so important for mm -hmm. us uh, to take better care of ourselves. We, not, we may not always have access to the latest and the greatest due to our demographics. And sometimes we're just put, you know, last or behind everyone else. They're mm -hmm. out in front of us. So it's so important for us to remain, stay educated, stay informed, read, watch, and stay in tune. Making self-care your health care. Make sure you're getting plenty of rest. Uh, getting, get some sunshine, fresh air, exercise, eat healthier. Those are all preventive measures. Self-care. When we think of self-care, some of you might think, oh, getting my hair done, my nails done, mm -hmm. and so on and right. so forth. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about taking care of your bodies, taking care of your health, as well as your mm -hmm. mental health, your physical health, social health, and spiritual health. Spiritual health. Read your Bible more. Study the word. Share God's word. That's all a part of your self-care. And if we're doing all of these things cumulatively, weekly, we're going to start progressing and feeling better about ourselves overall. Absolutely. And it's preventive care. So that when we do um, get our, our, our health care check, our, our numbers are going to be better. Uh, it's also another thing I want to make mention about self-care is, uh, you know, as far as nutrition, eating healthier, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, some of us may have blood, high blood pressure. We might want to incorporate drinking beet juice and uh, just exercising, Ooh, and sleeping, drinking more water. All of these things are going to attribute to better health care. Their self-care, which is going to attribute to better health care. So when we go to the doctor for our blood work we get that report back, our numbers are going to be lower. Our cholesterol is going to be lower. There's so many things that we need to work on as African-Americans um, to do better with our health. A lot of us are battling diabetes, mm -hmm. high blood pressure. At least maybe 75% of my family members uh, are on blood pressure med medication. Uh, they're pre-diabetic or diabetic. You know? 
We yeah. as black folks, we as African Americans, we as minorities, we have to do better. We have to make Absolutely. self care a part of our health care. I agree. And, you know, I'm glad you mentioned all of that because, you know, this is Black History Month and we want to put specific emphasis on, um, you know, Black health and how we can improve some of those statistics that you, you just mentioned. You know, how do we how do we break some of those generational curses, if you will? Uh, with some, some generational more. curses. Yeah. So uh, I look forward to this month discussing some of those things with you and providing strategies for our viewers to combat them. And even though, you know, we may be targeting um, the African-American or black community um, this month, all of the tips that you're going to be sharing can benefit anyone. But um, I yeah, just wanted to put that emphasis. All right. Awesome. So one more time, I'm just going to put up those three. Make yourself a priority. Set measurable, sustainable goals. Make self-care part of your health care. That's uh, those goals that we shared in January. Wanted to make sure you didn't forget them as we moved into February. And Faye, we always like to see what shirt you're wearing. What does your shirt say today? Okay, it says, you can, you will start now. Can you see that? All right. There we can, go. You will start, <laughs> you will start now. now. Yes, you we'll can, you will viewers start now. Okay, right. we're into our second month of the year. And we wanna achieve our goals this year. Latasha and That's I are right. gonna help you achieve those goals through Fitness with Faye. Remember to check out our library of videos, uh, exercise videos, we have something for everybody. Okay, there's no yeah. excuses. Exercise is not an option. God designed yep. your, our magnificent bodies and we have to take care of these bodies. That's we have right. one house to live in, one <laughs> house to live in. You only get one body viewer. Take care, mm -hmm. viewers. Take care of yourselves. That's right. And yes. no matter what you do to doctor it up, it's still that one house. That's right. That one body, that one house. <laughs> yes. Health is wealth. Health is wealth. Yeah. Well, is wealth. There's a saying that I heard that I often uh, make mention of when I'm speaking. And that is uh, man spend, a man or woman may spend all of their life gaining wealth. Mm. And then they end up spending all of their wealth gaining their health. Mm. Why? Because they Ooh. didn't do themselves. That's humbling. Yes. Yes. Mm. That puts things in perspective. Thank you for that. You're welcome. And that's a great way to end today. Thinking, okay. thinking about thinking about just that. Thanks for that reminder. Thanks for the boost. Um, we're going to start now. We're going to keep up. You. The dialogue could continue to share nuggets each week. And we thank you, Faye, um, for always motivating us to prioritize yeah. our bodies, our health. You're very welcome. I'm so happy to help in this regard. Okay. All right. Everybody stay healthy and active in a safe place. And I look forward to seeing you again next segment. All right. Thanks yeah. again. All right, You're everyone. Welcome. We're going to be right back after this break. Hey, let's check out this park. <laughs> oh, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> to find a great local park or forest near you, go to discovertheforest.org. All right, everyone, this wraps up another episode of AC Today Reports. We're so happy that you stay tuned in with us. And just wanna share some announcements. We have so much coming up. Um, in this month, February the 21st, mark that date on your calendar. February the 21st will be our conference-wide town hall. Of course, it'll be virtual. That's a Sunday at 10 a.m. We'll stream live right from here where you're watching Facebook or YouTube. Um, that's 10 o'clock. February the 21st with our administrators, our AEC town hall. Of course, we'll have a flyer after the program so you can see what that's all about. But that same day, that afternoon, our church ministries team, we're doing virtual training for all our local church leaders. And so we're gonna have that information on the website for you to register just an hour or two to spend together 
kind of learn some tools how to navigate this virtual ministry that we're all in right now so we'll have more information for you about that february the 21st mark it down on your calendar just call it aec day okay doesn't that work <laughs> well we thank you again for staying tuned the more you watch the more you know and we're looking forward to how we're going to end the program today with our video of the week this young preacher is the son of one of our preachers uh, Pastor Jimerson from our North Philly Church. But when I saw this message from his son, I said, this has got to be shared. Check it out and don't forget to check us out next week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Think about how tough last year was. Many of you did not go outside as much. Many of you didn't go to church as much. Many of you did not see your friends and your family as much. Many of you didn't go to school as much. And when you asked to do these things, your parents said no. The government said no. The church said no. But I wish you to know they didn't say no to hurt you. They said no to protect you. Sometimes no is better than yes. Last year was tough and full of no's, but we can still be thankful because when no comes from the right person, the no can be better than yes. Woo, hallelujah. Somebody need to say hallelujah. Somebody need to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your yeses and thank you for your no. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's pray, everybody. Oh, Lord, help us to be thankful. In Jesus' name, amen.